Welcome to the On the Run with Jess and Tom podcast. This is Jessica Taggart. And I'm Tom Conway. Hello. Welcome Hello, to everybody. The and we are here to talk to our spiritual seekers out there. Mm. We are diving into the mystical world of the Celestine Prophecy. Yeah, we are. Yes. So this is a book we actually read because it was a recommendation from a client of mine. After we went to Peru, she asked me if I have read this book. And this book, of course, talks about the energies in the world, right? All the all the living um, creatures in the world and how we exchange the energy with all the creatures in the world, mm -hmm. including nature. And so I started reading this book and it I felt like it was so deep. I recommended it to Tom. So he started reading it, and I think uh, a lot of these insights resonated with you as well, right? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of them, uh, you know, echo, echo our experience with, with individuals and uh, things we've experienced in our own life, and particularly, you know, in regard to nature, I've spent a lot of my life in the outdoors, and, um, you know, I, 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 that, that there's something uh, about a time alone in the woods, a time by yourself in the boat or by the seashore or something like that, where you, could, you, you can feel the essence of life. Yes, yes. So they talk about this manuscript, right? And um, the author made this um, story around this manuscript that tells, gives you nine insights to learn how to live better, you know, connecting mm -hmm. to the source. Mm -hmm. um, and now that and author would be James Redfield. Yes. It's probably good to point that out. Yes. So... Um, so we found it very interesting, and this is why we wanted to share it with you. Um, the first, we're going to talk about the insights, right? The first insight talks about this awakening happening, you know? Yeah, and, and so keep in mind, you know, put this in the context of uh, 1993 when Redfield wrote this. And, uh, you know, the new, the new Age was, was in swing at that point. You know, spiritualism was, was uh, a, a fairly new development in, in in definitely Western culture, and that's where you got a lot of this. The health, the self help stuff started to come along, and the gurus and all that other stuff. And so, you know, he was right in the pocket of that with this writing in in ninety three. Yeah, so they already saw this shift about to happen, right? People uh, looking for different ways to connect, other than the actual, the regular and rigid norms of society, and and I guess religion right mm -hmm. one specific yeah. religion yeah. so uh, humanity started opening the eyes to a new um idea i would say right an idea of well, you know i think i think they started opening their their i uh, their mind up to an old idea not necessarily a new one right well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. rediscovering you know why we're here mm -hmm and how we actually get into this deep connection with nature and with each other, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So this manuscript has nine insights, and we are going to discuss the insights, right? The number one was that, like I said, it was um, like the premonition of something happening, some like this shift in humanity happening, yeah, right? The awakening, yeah, mm -hmm. the awakening. Yeah. And then the second insight talks about the synchronicities, right? Mm -hmm. And how uh, when you are in the path of pursuing something, you start seeing, encountering these synchronicities that will take you to the right place, right? Yeah. And yeah, and and I. Th no, and I think it's also about like recognizing, you know, like a, like a, m many people would say, you know, there's no such thing as a coincidence. You know, many people that believe in uh, everything happens for a reason and mm -hmm. yada yada yada. Um, you know, there's no such thing as a coincidence. And so what this really does is it it it, it calls upon you to, to to recognize and focus upon the the um, things that would otherwise maybe be deemed as a coincidence by somebody. You know, for instance, if if you run into a particular stranger more than once, or you see. So you, know, you see someone um, that, that you know that you that you don't know, you know. Let's say twice in a week, I saw you at the supermarket. I saw you at the mall. It, you know, it, it but you know, kind of instructs you to go engage that and 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 under the premise that both of you have something valuable for each other, yeah, uh, to share. And so that's that was uh, 
the uh, longer man. Yes, and when I started seeing this actually transpire in my life was when I started doing like all the healing work, right? And when I had already found this path that I'm so passionate about, and every time I turn a corner, I find something that has to do with this, right? Mm -hmm. I see new things that relate to the work I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I go places, and and I'm going to give you an example. Um, the ladies I work with and I went to this fair, right? And we were standing, we had like a little booth where they were selling the the things they create with their own hands. And next to me, there was a lady with a crystal shop, mm-hmm. right? And I mean, there are like a hundred different businesses or 200, you know, hundreds mm-hmm. of different businesses. And this yeah. lady happened to be next to our booth, yeah. right? So I just walked to her to, you know, to see what she has because I love this kind of jewelry and crystals, you know, and, and all the energy that crystals carry too. Mm-hmm. So I went and, and I started talking to her, you know, and yeah. I really want to learn a lot more because I know crystals carry energy of also, right? So um, I went and I started talking to her and I just felt like it was my soul meeting an old soul that I already know, right? And and she does this kind of work helping people find, you know, their their voice and healing too. And she happens to be a healer. So let me let me clarify something here, only because I, I, I want to make sure everybody understands what we're talking about. When you talk about the people you work with, you're not talking about coworkers, you're talking about the community group that you lead yeah. and, and and the survivors that you work with on a daily basis. Yeah. And so part of the things that you do is some of your craft workshops and things like that to to kind of to, to do a lot of things for them. One is to give them a release and others to teach them their their skills and, and their worth. And then so you were at a craft fair uh, with the intention of distributing that stuff or interacting with other other people. And then you ran into this individual. Yeah. So so I was, you know, doing my work is what I do with these ladies are healing workshops. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And so when we take them out to the fair, it says with the mind that we are going to teach them that they can actually use, I mean, sell what they create with their own hands and use these as a resource you know, to support their families, which Mm -hmm. is our intention, right? Right. So they become independent so they can support their families. Mm -hmm. And um, so I met her and she told me part of her story and a lot of her story like is similar to mine, right? And then after a little while, somebody else came to her booth and it was a spiritual DJ, Mm -hmm. you know? And you know, I'm doing like the somatic dance and I'm into Mm -hmm. all these um, soul kind of music, you know, spiritual music and and then I, I met this guy, Will, and we started talking. And I'm like, this is another guy who belongs to this tribe, right? The mm-hmm. healing tribe. Mm-hmm. And every time I go to different places, I just keep meeting these people who, are, who, who have this goal, right? The goal of making this world a better place, especially for our future generations, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, healing yeah. our community. And again, again, I'm not disputing what you're saying, you know, I'm... I'm largely supportive of what you're doing. It's just important to understand that the souls collect in these specific kind of events also. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. you're, you're likely, you know, birds of a feather travel together kind of thing, and so you're likely... Yeah, to yeah, yeah. no, of course. Yeah. Now, now, I, of course, I go to these events where a lot of these people gather, yeah, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And it's just that it happened that I met these people in different places, you know, different events that had nothing to do with sp- spirituality, mm-hmm. but they were there, mm-hmm. you know, right next to me. Mm-hmm. So... And, and a lot of these things, and then I come across some workshops. Well, you know, the internet kind of reads your mind, right? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. that's, that's and, and that's so funny because you think, well, they make it very synchronic. Well, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And all these things. So it's just amazing. Uh, I feel that when you find that things that, that thing that drives your soul, mm-hmm. you start seeing... You know, all sure. the pieces of the puzzle start coming together. Yeah, provided you, you know? take the, the, the step in front of you, right? And, and you start walking that path, and the path will, will open up yeah. ahead of you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, then the insight number three talks about energy, right? And and do, do you remember in the book when they talk about this aura we all have, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. We all have this aura, and and the more connected to the source, and the source in this case is love. For other people, could be just God, could be you know, whatever they they believe in, right? That's the source. When you find that connection and 
you have that inside of you, in, in your soul, when you have that love, when you feel that compassion, that empathy, your energy field grows. And you can see it expand and touch other people, mm -hmm. right? That's, yeah. the, that's the way I understood it, right? And, and you can actually see see those auras right yeah i mean you, well, you're, you're encouraged to engage every every not i mean living thing and, and other things that are not obviously alive but are with love first right it, it's it's to engage them lovingly as, as a product of creation um and and so when you know you you lead with that that love and there's going to be an, ex an exchange there an energy yeah. exchange there mm -hmm. so and that takes us to insight number four talks about the power and control struggle and this is so interesting because they talk about people as being a charging port mm -hmm. right yeah like if you have no power you cannot charge anyone right if you have lost your power if you have lost that connection with the pureness of the source mm -hmm. you have no power you have no energy to give out right mm -hmm. and a lot of these energy suckers actually want to steal the energy from well, others, yeah, right? He, yeah, he describes this as a control drama. All of this right. is, is called the control drama and that, uh, you know, there, there are basically four uh, specific types of, of controllers or whatever you want to call it. Energy uh, suckers. Energy suckers, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and all of that is in an effort for, um, to have mastery of energy, right? It, it's, this, it's the person the person that's drawing the energy is, is you know, um, I guess for lack of a better, more powerful, right? I guess that makes sense, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm paraphrasing that, but that's, that's the idea. And so that what, what he's saying is that in all of life, it, it, it's, it's basically an exchange of energy and that people seek, uh, it, it's, it's like an energetic wrestling match almost to mm -hmm. back and forth for, for mm -hmm. energy. Yeah. 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 And, and do you want to tell our audience what the four, um, yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to read them though to make sure I got them right. Mm -hmm. And so. Yeah, the first one would be the intimidator. And it says, these energy suckers use aggression, dominance, and or fear to exert control over others. They thrive on power and often try to intimidate or manipulate those around them to feed off their energy. That's a pretty, uh, well, we could talk about them individually after. Yeah. Yep. And then the interrogators. The interrogators are individuals who constantly question and doubt others. They may challenge or criticize everything, leaving people feeling drained and defensive. Their constant need for answers and validation can deplete the energy of those they interact with. The aloof. The aloof energy suckers create distance and keep others at arm's length. They may appear to be disinterested, detached, or emotionally unavailable. The aloofness can cause others to seek attention and approval, which feeds the energy sucker's need for validation. And number four, poor me, poor me. Poor me energy suckers play the victim role and they constantly seek sympathy and attention. They often complain about their circumstances, focusing on their problems and challenges. Their negativity and self-pity can drain the energy of those around them as they seek validation and support. It's amazing. It, if you think about the exchanges of energy or the our life experiences, right? Have mm -hmm. you ever been in a place where you are with someone and you, your energy just like drops? Yeah, you haven't worked in as many offices as I had in your <laughs> professional career, and I've been with every one of these people. Yeah, it, it, oh mu my God. Mul multiple iterations of them. I mean, it's it is, essentially you know, a workplace is what we got here. It is life draining. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. it dra it drains the life out of you. Mm -hmm. You know, and and this is why it's so important to learn how to set our boundaries, right? And sometimes we become those energy suckers. Well, we all play you know? one of these rules. Yeah. Roles sometimes we do degree. because mm -hmm. we fall, a lot of the times we fall in that victimism mind because, you know, let's say I grew up in a victimism um, state of mind, right? And a lot of times that victim mentality returns, you know, without me being conscious but it returns. And then I become that sacred of energy, right? So that's why becoming aware of these behaviors is, is so important. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then when you start feeling like someone is draining your energy, it's best to pull out of the situation and just walk away, right? Because it is too much. Sometimes it's just like they take the life out of you. Yeah, and you're, you're not entitled to deliver it. And I think that's, you know, especially, you know, if you were raised to be polite, you know, and we were, you know, uh, uh, my, my siblings and I were raised to be polite. You know, we had a, um, a religious education or Catholic education to be specific. And it was uh, very, very manner driven, very subservience driven, very uh, rule follower driven. Um, and so, you know, sometimes in the, in the, 
um, enactment of, of those matters, you know, you can, you can allow yourself to be trampled upon by somebody else because you don't know how to say, you know, excuse me, I'm not interested in this conversation right now. This is something, you know, I'd rather right. not engage in, right. or, you know, I'd prefer if we could stick to X topic, Y topic or, or, or Z topic or whatever it is. And so, um, yeah, you can, you can get, you can get dragged down a hole, um, yeah. in a number of ways. And I think all of us probably play one of these, you know, uh, roles throughout inter- our inter- life iteratively and, and more more than one you know depending yeah. on the situation sure yeah 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 mm-hmm. and um now that you mentioned religion you know religion also if you think about it can make you a, a finger pointer well, right sure, yeah. because uh if you if you believe certain you have like this um moral beliefs well, right you, you you have this doctrine mm-hmm. so a lot of religious people place themselves on an altar kind of thing. And so when they mm-hmm. see the world acting in a different manner, they they are very fast to point fingers, right? And 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 a lot of the times they don't point fingers at them in the mirror. Well, most of the know? time, I mean if you've spent as much time around churches uh, as I've have, you you'll see that um you know the the people that that are on the inside of those walls are you know a, a, as bad as any anyone that 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 doesn't come and doesn't belong to a congregation. So, I mean, you listen. Know, the, the issue is that churches of every kind are composed of human beings, and human beings of every kind are composed of these personality types, always seeking validation, always wanting to be included, and and you know, um, feel belong. You know, the state of belonging, and and in turn, they validate that themselves by invalidating other people. I mean, this is just the human. This is the human condition. You know. Yeah. 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 And- Which just turns a lot of people off to faith and, and religion, and, and and it's a shame because. Um, you know, you have to engage people either in your congregation or outside of your congregation and, and understand that they are, they are people too, you know, that they, yeah. they're, they're having the same experiences, um, faith-wise or not. Yeah, no, it's, this takes us actually to the fifth insight that talks about messages from the mystics, right? And, and this talks about, it doesn't matter what faith, what religion, you know, it doesn't matter what's your your background in terms of uh religion right or, or what you believe in but if you are connected to the root of this creation which is nature with the root of your soul which is pureness light light and pureness right if you're connected to that and you actually project that outside with love with compassion to others then you you create this balanced energy between you and and the ones you have around you right Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's of course it's difficult right it's difficult because not everybody is up to to raise their energy right a a lot of people people are just are are just in that state where they can't raise the bar i mean they cannot raise that vibration for some reason Mm -hmm. right and and Mm -hmm. we just stay in that in that in the past one of the one of the insights actually talks about clear in the past and it might be the next one yeah it is actually the past uh the next insight talks about clear in the past right if we don't get rid of the limitations and the labels and all those things we have adopted growing up Mm -hmm. right and all the things that i mean all the things we believe with the perception we had Mm -hmm. about our life yeah right again this ties into everything Pretty much, regardless of how we chop up these episodes or, or or what we read, it all comes down to basically this this same situation: is that nobody's got a great backstory. I mean, I, I, there are some people, right, that that were raised by, you know, emotionally stable and developed parents, and 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 they have whatever diff- different challenges in their life. But majority of people come from people that are dysfunctional people. We all are. None, none of us are, are perfect. None of us, you know. Mm-hmm. And so and so, it's always comes out. At some point, you have to step into your, your individuality and your adulthood and say, "Hey, I'm not. My, first of all, I'm not my past. Mm-hmm. Secondly, w- w- you know, what, whatever whatever that was, are, are lessons I need to understand, and either repeat them if they're good, or make sure that I don't pass them on if they're not, and and step into your individual role here. You know, yeah. which I believe we all we all have an individual job to do in this life. You know. Yeah. And it's not, we're not always leading characters in that story, by the way, which is difficult in today's culture. You know, everybody's got their own personal, you know, uh, television channel, you know, via yeah, yeah. TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or, and YouTube. And so, yeah. um, Spotify. Yeah. No. And so, uh, don't miss it. And so, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's difficult to understand the story's not about you. It's not like this is not, and not everybody is. is yeah. Uh, I mean, it is about you in the, in the f- way that, you need to take care of what you carry in right, here. Right, correct. Yeah, it is about you when it comes to 
you know, it's time for you to say, I'm letting this baggage go. Sure. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. It, it is about you when you decide to give yourself love first before you ask for it. Right. It's about you when you decide to respect yourself before you ask for it somebody uh, somewhere else. Right. So I think everything starts with us. Yes. But we are not the center of right, everything. We're not the main character right? is, the, is but, my point. Right. In, in other words, don't expect to win every argument or, or never have your feelings hurt or never be, you know, uh, treated poorly at work or in the street or, or whatever, you know, um, that's yeah. a different, a yeah, different one situation. Of the, that's a, a thing that we all need to learn. We need to learn that the world's reaction is not about us, right? right? Mm-hmm. Whatever the world is doing out here has nothing to do with your value and with the work you're doing in here. Right, mm-hmm. your yeah. world. Don't expect them to get it. Right, your world and what you get outside in the world is what you give. Mm-hmm. Right, so this is why it's so important to go back to the past and see yourself with with compassion. You know, forgive those who harm you in a way, and understand that they had a story that they were going through. You know, and they mm-hmm. they had their own baggage that they couldn't let go of. Sure, and so. We we really need to see start seeing others with compassion and with empathy, right? And see ourselves mm-hmm. with the, in that way too. So we start seeing ourselves with compassion and with empathy, you know, understanding our processes, being patient with with our mistakes, mm-hmm. you know, because we continue to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And and so if we do that with us, mm-hmm. if we do that with ourselves, for mm-hmm. forgiving you know, ourselves for the mistakes we have made, we're going to be able to forgive others and to see others with compassion and, 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 and empathy, right? And, and that's one of the things he, touch, he touches upon, you know, living in a world with love, empathy, and compassion, right? That's, that's the main goal, you know? So you can connect yourself to that source of love and, and be that, this, you know, this charger, mm. <laughs> be a charger. For those who need you, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And always have enough energy to give out to the world around you, right? Mm-hmm. And and don't let those energy suckers take you. Well, that's what I was saying. What what do you what do you do to those people that just um they're they're not part you know they're, they're not part of that equation, so to speak. I mean, we we all have them in our lives, you know, um, and they just uh, they insist on yeah, re- on remaining where they're at. You it's know? tough. It's yeah. tough. I mean, the only thing we can do is see them with compassion well, it remi- you, know? you know it reminds me of, of the mind shift that we covered way back when and it was like you know n- not everybody's comes along for the ride you know and, and, mm-hmm. and i think sometimes it's it's that too and that could that could be difficult you know depending on your nature of your relationship to uh, certain individuals you know but yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah but i mean you can share what you've learned right and try to enlighten their their life in a way but some people are never ready yeah you know mm-hmm. some people are so wounded that they don't see any other way yeah you know and and, and bitterness has taken over unfortunately Mm -hmm. you know and this is why in order for you to see the bright side of life every day you have to practice finding something bright well and i think also finding a community of like-minded individuals right that that share that desire to grow and and to and to um actualize and and into the next step in their lives and, and not to, you know, hold on to the past and kind of swim in the sewage yeah. that, that we encounter on a daily basis, you know? And, 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 and a lot of those people, a lot of people that go out just to criticize others, you know, that's a waste of energy too. You know, a lot of people are out just to criticize what others are doing and they don't take the time to dive in, into their own, you know, mm-hmm. selves and, and grow. You know, how are you going to grow if, if you are always criticizing other people, you know? So it is fun. If you have found a place in your life where you feel like you're above everyone, yeah, you're good for you. Well. You know, be an example. Be a leader. Be uh, inspire people. But do not point fingers, mm-hmm. right? That's hurtful, you know? And, and, at, and at the end of the day, when you do that, all that bad energy mm-hmm. comes back to you. Well, sure. Listen, I mean, one, one of the reasons why key characteristics of leaders is to assume responsibility is is for things such as that right i mean there's no such thing as as blaming others for, for the current situation or, or the uh, the outcome of the situation a, a leader you know takes responsibility for what's happened and they figure out a way a way forward and it's a similar situation in social circles you know you can't 
you, you can't even blame the people. You know, it, let's say you, you consider yourself to be an enlightened person and you're in a room of people that are, that are unenlightened. You, you really can't bl you know, blame them for the outcome of the interaction. I mean, it, com it comes down to how you handle it, the things you choose to engage and not, and uh, how long you want to remain in the room. You know, you, 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 the, the door's unlocked, you know, in, in every yeah. situation. So, Yeah, I mean, share the light with everyone you encounter, right? But those who are not ready to see their own light, you just have to be compassionate, you know, because a lot of a lot of us human are not ready to see that light. To well, see, I to I think that a lot of, a lot of us don't know it's there. You know, they they, mm -hmm. they, they were never taught to to recognize it, and they they don't know how to embrace it. You know, mm -hmm. again, that's a that's a forgiveness situation in most cases, and and, and it's a trauma overcome a situation too, right? Again, like who 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 knows who raised anyone you know whatever whatever you're you're if you had if you're fortunate enough to have parents at all whatever whatever you know marks that, that they left you know yeah. d during the rearing process i mean that it takes a lot sometimes for people to recognize their value you know and there's where compassion comes you know you, you really need to see everyone with compassion you don't know what their stories are mm -hmm. you don't know what their scars are you yeah. know you don't mm -hmm. know how painful it still is, you know, how much they are still holding on to that pain. Yeah. And they, you know, sometimes instead of letting go, they just hold it close, you know? Yeah, I think this is, this is one of the reasons why, and, and I know you share my, um, my, my interest in, in young people, you know, and why I think it's so cri you know, critical to get to kids, in, in school-age kids, in, in, in middle school, in junior high school, in high school, and, and, and kind of, um, you know, get them to be part of the conversation mm -hmm. and understand that they're not, they're not their parents, they're not their history, they're not any mistakes they might have made as younger kids. They're also not their family's mistakes, right? Yeah. A lot of times, you know, people have, uh, young kids have siblings that might be incarcerated or a parent that might, God forbid, be incarcerated or, or the victim of a, a, a crime, self-inflicted or otherwise. And so they, they bear the, the, the shame of, of that, you know, yeah. and, and the relation to that. And, you know, it's not, it's not their weight to carry. And so many other things come out of that through adolescence and young adulthood and, and, and you know, through, 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 through your, your 20s, your 30s. Life. Yeah, right. If, yeah. if you don't ever go and say, okay, you know, this isn't mine or, you know, this is mine, but it's okay because this has taught me X, Y, and Z or this has made me good at this or taught yeah. me not to do this. And I, I have my superpower is this because I, I experienced this as a young person. And so that's why, you know, uh, one of the things that I seek more than anything is, is, to, is just to connect with, with that, that youth um, component of our society and, and really kind of, you know, get, get in there and, and br bring them to life, you know? Yeah, I, that'll be the beginning of changing our generations to come, you know? Mm -hmm. And it is so important for them to realize that their experiences, as bad as they were, they are part of, of their evolution, mm -hmm. you know, as yeah. souls in this, in this planet. And so for them to understand that it wasn't their fault, that, um, you know, there's a way to find forgiveness in your heart, mm -hmm. you know, to those that harm you and forgive yourself, you know, and, and go back and rescue that little child that went through these, these um, experiences, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, um, and bring and, and assure this child that everything's going to be okay, that you are going to be the one taking care of this child now. You meaning yourself? Yourself. That's correct. Your your adult self, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. that grown person who understand that your the pureness of your soul is what needs that we need to get back, right? We need to get back to that the pureness of our soul. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the connection. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, what, I think one of the methods that that you mentioned to me that you're familiar with is regression therapy. Oh about, yeah, right. And, yeah, and, and, that, and that focuses on that. Um, you know, that travel backward kind of and uh yeah i mean all of these psychedelics you know all this work um therapy also you know hypnosis all of these tools really help you go back and and so you can identify what what experiences marked you mm -hmm. and the way yeah. you know to the, or what experiences gave you these labels what experiences gave you this pain that you carry, yeah, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and visualizing that little child feeling the pain and just going back and, and rewriting the story. Like we have done this, um, quantum medit healing oh, meditation, yeah. uh -huh. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you go back and meet the little child and you don't, you don't really focus on the story so much, but you focus on the emotion. 
what is the emotion this child is carrying at this moment? So you can meet him in this moment and say, listen, we're going to process this and I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to embrace you. I'm going to hug you and I'm going to take you to a safe place, which, which is here. Mm -hmm. where we are right now mm -hmm. right this yeah. is the safe place for our inner child mm -hmm. so this is very important to just go back to the past only to comfort our our inner child you know and to let this inner child know that we are okay mm -hmm. you know yeah and then the seven insight talks about uh following the flow mm -hmm. Right, the you know, flow and simple, yeah. like similar to what you mentioned earlier. You know, with with uh, your, you know, you start to walk kind of that path, and then you're you you encounter you know situations and individuals that that assist that you know that um that journey and and to kind of release yourself into that. Yeah. yeah. Embrace the synchronicities. Embrace the opportunities. Right. Once you open up your soul to to what you are actually passionate about, you're gonna see opportunities present. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so embrace the opportunities, embrace the change, embrace all the possibilities because they're out there, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just don't stand still. Right. I mean, yeah. Find out where they are and go. Yeah. Go with the flow. Mm -hmm. Number eight. Do you have number eight? Do I have number oh, eight? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You were going to talk about this one the interpe interpersonal ethic. Oh, yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah. I mean, this, this one doesn't seem so. Not, not as mystical, I guess, as the rest of the book, just because it just it just ties into your personal relationships in, in any regard. And so I'll just, yeah, I'll just read that. Um, it says, the insight focuses on the importance of authentic and meaningful connections with others. The high, the, it highlights the power of genuine listening, empathy, and understanding and fostering deep, deeper relationships. I just said fostering in my Long Island act, Long Island accent. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, that's that's those are critical components to any functional relationship right there's a reason why good therapists are great listeners good spouses are great listeners good friends are great listeners it's it's such a critical um thing and and per personally you know i love i love deep conversations i love i love deep relationships with people i don't have a lot of really leading um relationships in my life generally when i have a friend they're they're, they're a pretty deep friend because i like to go deep with, with conversation and get to know what makes people tick and and, and be able to share my own thoughts without holding back you know that's something i really like and so yeah i mean i think that the, the interpersonal ethic it, it governs our entire experience here here on earth from the time you know we're, we're kids to to the time you know we, we leave this place it's just really important and, and again, you know one of the other ones mentioned this in terms of energy right i think it was it was uh i don't know if it was two or three when, when they say you know like when when you have that coincidence engage that coincidence and try to find you know both of you have something to give each other but that's the case with every, every two people on earth like you really you can learn something from everyone yeah regardless of how maybe all you know off you think they are or or what you know if it's a class issue a culture issue whatever it is you can learn something from from everyone um and, and it's harder it's harder to think that they might be able to learn something from you i i that, i don't that's one of the things i struggle with like i'm, I'm a student right Right? I, I mm -hmm. love I love to learn from people, to watch people, to see how they do things, ask questions, and figure things out. I'm not so good in in, in the in, in understanding that my output might be valuable, but but I I do think that I think that any two people can can share um you know wisdom mm -hmm. and, and grow grow from that interaction and, each other. and across and across you know generations and age groups and stuff. How many times have you met a a really brilliant um older person you know who's still very much in control of their wits and and you can have fascinating conversations with them you know because of their life in retrospect and things that they've experienced and and that you you have yet to or may never you know because of social periods or you know whatever might go on and so you, you have so you know you can learn so much and then like i said like i I happen to like you know young people in that regard. I remember when my kids were little, and I used to like to talk to their friends when they came over and just ask them questions and kind of mess with them a little bit and stuff like that. But I, I loved uh, you know the the genuinity of their answers and the pureness of their answers and like watching them like roll it rolling around in their head and trying to answer like what you're asking. And you can learn from them too, you know. You, yeah. can, you can learn from just the simplicity of honesty and the yeah. ease in which that they just share their thoughts, you know. Yeah, I and think so that's I that. something we need yeah. to bring back to our adult life, you know, that innocence. That honesty, that drive. When you are a child, you think you can do anything and everything, right? When you, well, when it I depends. was, if you, unless you know, if you were raised Irish, you don't believe you can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 oh, wow. you're, you're told that you can't. You're like, hey, no, you can't do that. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, when I was five, I, I mean, these dreams wouldn't let me. My dreams won't let me sleep. Mm -hmm. that's how crazy I would, I would my get in trouble for not sleeping <laughs> my mind was so and crazy dreaming. and I always thought oh my god this is possible yes I can I even plan 
my ideas, my, my goals in my mind. And I was like, yes, of course, I'm going to do this, this, this. And then, of course, the labels came mm, and the insecurities yeah, came yeah. and all this other, you know. Mm. And then I was like, no, I'm not going to be able. So, Adulthood yeah. came and I was like, no, I can't. I'm not going to be able to because I had already put myself so many limitations, right? Mm -hmm. And um, talking about the personal ethics, I was thinking... Now, when you when you have an interaction with other person, now you know that it's an exchange of energy. Sure. Right. Yeah. Every time you have an interaction with someone, you're exchanging energy, and there, and then you think about the struggle of power. Right. Who can like yeah, overpower I, the I energy look back of the on other? A lot of right. Relationships and uh, yeah, you can you can you can identify these components times and, and 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 again, like I said earlier, times when you you are any one of those or other people or any one of those, you know, because of whatever whatever you had ticking on inside like that. I've, I've always had a really um, strong connection with people's energy. Mm. You know, I, I walk into a room and, and I can, I can, I, I can, I can feel it, you know, right away. Um, and, you know, it's funny cause I'll still try to talk myself out of it because you want to, you want to give people the opportunity to prove, prove you wrong, so to speak. Like, I don't like to like, let, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a first impressions kind of guy. Like I give people grace, you know, because I know that there's many people in my life that I've met and I was off a little bit or not, not focused on the interaction or whatever. And I, I could have come off in, in a number of ways. And so I try never to let that initial reaction flavor the, the experience, even though, you know, it does on some level, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, I, I've just always had a, a really good, uh, intuition that way, you know, yeah. energetically. And so it's, it's, I think it's helped a lot, you know, cause I, again, I enjoy, uh, no, it, it, as much as I, I, I loathe people, I, I love socializing in, in my in yeah. my in my own way. So it's very it's very strange because I do love I, I, I love the human interaction. I just gotta figure out how to do it without people. And then I'd really love it better. Uh, uh, I don't know about that. Okay, yes. Yeah. So um if you think about how we have been living our life without knowing that we are on, on this struggle for power, right? On this struggle for recharging ourselves all the time. So we're always one. It's like people are always struggling to recharge, and sometimes they want to recharge. They want to recharge themselves of other people. No, it's always. But see, this is the thing. Like, let's really plug. And that's the dynamic. What does Western culture tell us? Western col culture. And and the and the the worldwide marketing machine that that we are a, a, a participant in, they tell you that you're unhappy. They mm -hmm. remind you that you're unhappy, and they give you uh, millions of ways to make yourself happy. Whether it's through uh, financial gain or material goods or vacations or uh, drugs, looks. alcohol, looks, whatever it is, it's going to recharge you. And so, if if you're drawing your charge from the wrong place, right, and which which is, the, in my opinion, is is the case. If you're if you don't have a a connection with your creator, um, whoever you may imagine that person or, or being to be, the, the, the source of life, um, you're going to be pulling your energy from the wrong place. And so yeah. that's what, that's the, the, the beauty and, and the importance of meditation and prayer and, and just even quiet time with yourself. Like you could call it, call it whatever you want, you know, walking around, like I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, I love, I love walking around in the outdoors by myself. I love walking along the beach or I used to go fishing by myself and, and times I used to go hunting by myself. And there's, there's such a, um, a depth to, to you, the state of mind there, you know, which is also, you get from, even though I'm not, a, I'm not a, I wouldn't consider myself a runner and I'm not, it's not one of the activities that I'm like, oh, I want to get out and run. When you are outside running, you know, after, after a couple of miles, just I, I, I start to enjoy it. For me, it's like the two-mile mark. And then you're in your head. Then you're just locked in your head. You can hear your heartbeat. You hear your, your shoes hitting the pavement. And, and you're just, you just connected to that, that rhythm of your body and the rhythm of, of the, you know, what's going on around you. And then you're, in, you're inside yourself. Yeah. And so that, that's, all of that stuff comes. And so if, you're not, if that's not where you're getting your charge from, then you're most likely getting it from from rela you know malformed right. relationships and social hierarchies and and just all that BS. So yeah, we are this perfect creation, right? We come to this world as as being this perfect creation. Then we adopt all these things, and we we ended up needing uh, validation because we don't get it from our parents. A lot of us, right? We don't get the connection, so we need the connection from outside. Uh, we feel like we need the connection from outside. We need the validation from outside. Well, we need... If uh, you don't feel it, where else would you imagine you can get it, right? right. You'd have to say, I don't have it here. It must be out there somewhere. Let exactly. Me, let me so it, this is know? the culture. The culture is everything I need, I need is outside of me, mm -hmm. but it's not. Right. 
everything you need is in here when you are connected, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, and this is something that really needs to change. This is the culture that needs to change. When well, you find, I, mean, I just have, can, let me let me. I don't know if I'm correcting you or I'm, I'm just adding to what you said. Everything you need is in here, mm -hmm. but because your ability to connect to everything you need mm -hmm. already exists inside you. In other words, yeah. in terms of of, of, of a, a, a universal energy, right? It's not. Right. It's not that you yourself as an autonomous being is all you need. No, no, it's no, just no. that you already have all of the tools you need to connect to to what's there and what's yeah. born into you already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have the tools to see yourself with compassion. You have the tools to give yourself validation. You have the tools to give yourself that connection that you were always looking for, right? You have the tools to find that connection to the higher power so you can be whole, right? And so you can go out to the world not to take from anyone, but to be a source of energy for those who need it or who, and for those who need to learn, right? That there's no need for you to take energy from anybody else. You need to be your. Do you, you think it's conscious though? I don't. I don't no, I mean, it's yeah. no, it's no, not. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not. I don't think it is. It's just no. a natural. Like if if you're hungry and 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 he's hitting a peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. I'm like, oh. Yeah, of hey, course. I, I, he has this what is, I need. This is exactly what I was saying. You are born as this perfect light, perfect connection, right? And then everything else on top of you is just like dust, dust, dust. and then, I mean, you cannot see what you what you are. And everything you were born with is like covered, right? So where do you find this? What we think is like, okay, when I when I fall in love, I'm gonna get that from my husband, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's what little girls think. When mm, I find girls it, think it too. Uh, when I'm when I find my prince, I'm gonna find validation. I'm mm -hmm. gonna find connection. I'm gonna find love. Yikes. I'm gonna find respect. No, you have to find that in you first, right? And and, and be that that charger be that pole of light mm. mm -hmm. so and that's that and then um number number nine talks about the engaging culture right mm -hmm. the, yep. the, yeah where the shift already happened and we engage into this compassionate culture a loving culture yeah that's like right? I, I imagine like you know i don't know you're a lot younger than I am, but you know there was a Coke commercial in the '70s, and it was like a whole bunch of hippies like dancing around drinking Coke. Because I like to see the world, to see the perfect. We all like. Like, yeah, and it's all, it's all like that. But but you know, it, it is the idea of of it. You know, it, like the, like everyone always says, if everybody would do this at once, if everybody would live generously, if everybody would live outgoingly, there would there would be balance, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, you'd re you'd reach a, a, a balance, but yeah you know it's it's necessary you know to have that spiritual awareness and so nine nine know? focuses on that futuristic state and what you know uh earth becomes or, or, or life itself becomes after that state is reached and with plenty of resources and blah blah yada 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 and, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and you know that that'll be like the perfect world right where we are all there just to grow in power you know yes. and empower others and, and and recharge each other you know when you are and, and, and one of the chapters in the book talks about how when, when he starts connecting to that feeling of love, the same feeling of love he felt when he fell in love for the first time, the same feeling of love he felt when he was connected to nature for the first time in that, in that way, when he's able to just close his eyes and connect to that love, deep sense of love, his energy field grows. Mm -hmm. right yeah and if you stay in that state we didn't really touch on that right like so, so in, in the in the book um every every the aura of everything what we would call something's aura or you know all 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 life um has has a, a visible energy field right and, and yeah. it's different colors uh based based on uh you know different factors and different whatever different forms of life it is but uh, there's there's several scenes where they describe you know looking at two people in a, in a conversation and you can see the 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 energy dimming the and, and brightening in someone uh, or or the colors changing based on the emotions that the person's experiencing and then looking out over the landscape and seeing you know the trees and and, and all the life kind of glowing uh, with with that and I don't think we really touched on that enough because it's a kind of, it's a, it's an actual key part of, yeah. of the book you know and it was nice that we actually read it after we came back from the jungle because I did feel that connection to the source of life right because yeah. i mean everything there is so like rich so vibrant so yeah. alive so like and and it's true you know you can just go outside and connect with nature and feel like you are this sense of 
this sense of wholeness. What you felt when you when you yeah, yeah always, this yeah. what you felt exactly what you felt when we when you did the ayahuasca, mm -hmm. this sense of belonging, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so, how do we find that sense of belonging without looking for it outside of us? How do we find that when we go in the inside, right? Yeah, when we go deep inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's why this ex this experience with the ayahuasca was to me was that yeah. you know finding connection with my own soul, with my own wisdom, right? And 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 the the plant spirit the spirit of the plant actually helps you get into this journey right yeah so yeah, i just want to clarify when i say read i mean listen i mean listen yeah yeah and so i listen to the book mm -hmm. um, i read some things but but not not for any period of time because i can, i generally can't sit still long enough and i do it while i'm doing other things but i was glad that um i listened to it before we saw the movie and uh, no offense james redfield, redfield but that was a terrible film It, it mm -hmm. didn't, it didn't, like, like many films, right? And, and they often all, almost always, they, they tell a different story in essence, right? Because you have to, you have to compact like so, so much detail into uh, 90 minutes or 120 minutes, you know, if it's really something worth something. But I, I thought that that movie did a horrendous job of relaying the, uh, the sentiment of the book, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it just didn't, didn't do a good job. It, it would have been, had I not read the book prior, I don't think I could have followed that film. And I wanted I wanted to watch it all the way through just to see, you know how how it how it developed, but it was just uh, didn't do it justice. And it's funny because no. according to I I listened to an interview with him. In fact, at the end of the audio book, I know you listened to the same one I did. They have an interview with him and and his and I believe she's now his wife who kind of co-wrote this and then and then and wrote the screenplay, the initial screenplay for the film. If I'm not mistaken, if I am, forgive me if you didn't write it. Um, but they were they were thrilled with it. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm, no, yeah. Yes, I did feel like the um, the book itself is a lot deeper than the movie. Well, like all, I mean, yeah. all are right. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how skillful is the screenplay at at condensing, you know, a selecting the critical details and and, and now representing them in visually, which is really cool. Like it's hard. It's I mean, it's, it's really fascinating piece of filmmaking, right? Because you have to choose the the right character, you know, the right actors and actresses to, yeah. to, to physically relay the, the embody the, the characters and then also you know all just all, all of it the light and sound like, they should have called I, me I like cinema yeah, they should have uh, called me they needed yeah. a peruvian actress to well, I, i don't think they have uh, they have peruvian actors i, I didn't there was there was there was two hispanic people in that movie yeah because the, the, pro the, the celestine prophecy takes place yeah. in peru Yeah, it was literally right? two so, Hispanic people in the home yeah. movie, but all seemed to be Caucasian people. Yes. I believe there were there, well, some there, Spanish people who spoke Spanish, but it wasn't two. it wasn't yeah. like there a were, Spanish Spanish two. from Peru, right? Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But you know, they, they they put some effort, you know, and for that we applaud applaud them. But um yeah, it didn't touch me as deep as the book did. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the book also suggests um, following your intuition, you know, your inner guide. So it's good. It's always, you know, great to tap into your own wisdom. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. yeah. I remember the uh, there was a specific scene where uh, the main character had to choose between the the two roads and which yeah. one to go, and he kind of allowed it to draw him downward. But it's funny, you know. One of the other things, actually, in the book, now that I'm thinking about it, and in in the, in the movie as well, uh, was how even your wrong choice is the choice you were meant to make. You know that there's a lot of that, like a lot of that. You are in in the moment where you're meant to be in the moment, regardless of how you got there. You know, and so one one of the, one of the scenes, uh, you know, they wind up. Uh, In, like imprisoned in some makeshift prison and then he because of that he winds up meeting the the girl that they he was separated with from earlier in the story and then they go mm -hmm. on to escape together and so one of the, the his missions was to find her and help her and then he felt like he wasn't gonna be able to reach that mission when he got locked up but it but it actually turned out that that was how he was to find her and escape and so there's a yeah. lot of that kind of yeah. idiosyncrasies in the in the movie and stuff like that and the i mean i should say the story in general so it was good i like i mean it, it, it was a uh It was good. And so know. it happens in life, right? Because you don't know why you take this path. But something inside of you is telling you, just take this path. You know, and regardless of all the negative experiences that you might encounter, you know, they are taking you wherever you need to go. And you're always going to the place you're, you need well, to every go. Every experience right? is a lesson. And, and in essence, there really is no negative experience. It's just... Um, lessons derived um in 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 
different manners and, and some of them are, are a lot less comfortable than others and it, yeah and, and albeit painful you know and so um those are the ones we'd probably call negative but there really is there really is no negative experience that they're, they're all instructive yeah you know yeah. if you allow them to be so yeah this is why times it's not necessary to hang on into the the pain, you know, the regret. No, be mindful you know, of the experience. situations, right? And be mindful and, experience. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've we've gone through a lot of situations where you're like, "Why did I do that?" Right? Yeah. But then you you answer yourself your que your question and say, "Well, I did that, and I went through that because I needed to learn something from this experience." Yeah, and in the moment, that's another self dialogue. Is okay. I I don't see this now. You know, I don't understand what this is about now, but I know. It's for my good. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, go, it's going to have, it, it's got a positive outcome, whatever it is. And again, the, the, the positive outcome is not always in your lifetime for you and visible to you. Uh, many times it can benefit other people. They, they learn from your experience or whatever the case is. But if you, if you, if you even go through the, the painful moments in your life, which is difficult to do, and, and I've been there and just say, no, like, I know that this is, this is for the best. I know that this is going to, you know, affect what's next you know yeah. and even if it, it causes you to be able to be a better resource for other people in their own pain very similar to what you do in your work you know it, it, like you have that experience and that strength that you can give to others now because you've endured the pain of it for you you know so that's that's a critical yeah critical and it's, step. it's all part of the evol evolution like we said before mm -hmm. yeah. so we should take it as that right so we don't become victims again and all right. the time, right. you know, so we don't, we don't go back to that state of mind constantly, you know, just see it as, as a step forward mm -hmm. in our growth yeah. in this, in this lifetime. And 100%. that's all. all right. And I think we have covered all nine insights. We There's have. a 10th one. I just downloaded the 10th inside <laughs> oh is it so okay so at the end that's right so at the end of the movie and, and i won't ruin a few guys or the end of the book it's inferred that the, you know i can i don't remember how the main character gets the message that there is an there there is another i don't think it says it i don't remember if it says it, it, there's a tenth or there's another or there's more or whatever but the, so that's how the that's how it kind of leaves off and paves the way for an additional uh you know additional storytelling but yeah so so you want to summarize the insights? Just if you want to read just the titles. Oh, you mean go, to read through the list? Yeah, or? just list uh, read the list so we so we know what they are because they're supposed to be sure. tools to um. Oh, actually, have them here to live oh, a, a enlightened life and connect, yeah. right? Yep. All right. So the nine insights are a critical mass. The insights suggest that humans are on the verge of a spiritual awakening, a shift in consciousness that will lead to a new way of living and interacting with the world. The second was the longer now. That means this insight emphasized the importance of living in the moment and being fully aware of the synchronicities and the meaningful coincidences that occur in our lives. And again, that's to engage that, that situation that seems to be a coincidence and, and, and to actively engage it and, and uh, bring, you know, bring it, bring it into, into, action and the third insight was a matter of energy and that explores the concept of energy and how it flows through everything this is what i was referring to earlier with the auras and things that are visible it suggests we can increase our energy by being aware of our own energy dynamics and interacting with others in a positive and uplifting way the fourth insight struggle for power this insight delivers the dynamics of power and control and how they impact our relationship and interactions it encourages us to move away from power struggles and instead focus on empowering others and ourselves anybody who works in a in, in, in an office uh, uh that's for you corporate so you're, you're well you're welcome corporate and not so much even, I, i've worked for small businesses of of three to five people and and even in groups that small you can you can have the same thing going on so it's just the human condition the fifth insight the message of the mystics insights explore the teachings of very old spiritual traditions and the highlights a common message of love unity and connection that they share and so this this just goes back to the you know the the universality of of, of faith in general and and the, the source of life 
um, being universal across any any denominations or faith or, or religious beliefs, and so that that's just there to kind of uh, unite. That that's was kind of the, the premise of the prophecies to to a degree. And then the sixth insight is clearing the past. The insight emphasized the importance of resolving past traumas, releasing emotional baggage in order to live fully present and experience greater spiritual help, otherwise known as psychotherapy. The seventh insight engages the flow. The seventh insight encourages us to trust and follow the flow of life embracing opportunities and synchronicities that come our way. It suggests that when we align with the flow, we can experience greater fulfillment and purpose. Go with the flow. The eighth insight, the interpersonal ethic, this insight focuses on the importance of authentic and meaningful connections with others. It highlights the power of genuine listening, empathy, understanding, and fostering deeper relationships. I would say, count to 10 in your head every time you want to speak when you're in a conversation with somebody and let them let let them continue to speak. You'd be you'd be surprised what you learn when you can stay quiet. It's difficult to master, mm-hmm. becomes easier over time, and it's really great. And then the ninth insight, the emerging culture, and so that's the one that focuses on the outcome of implementing all of these other ones. When there's a universal state of enlightenment in the world, and we're all happy and got pink auras around us, mm-hmm. and we're just not wearing shoes, um, and just enjoying it. So that that's nine. Well, um, where we all become one. We all become right? one. Mm-hmm. Call one. Yes. So we really recommend this book if you are into spirituality and you want to, you know, learn how to connect, you know, with one another and stop this power struggle for once. Yeah, Already. Yeah, stop this. Stop it. Cut it out. Yes. Leave me alone. <laughs> Quit Don't it. take my energy. Quit it. Don't take my energy. I'm not giving it. You I'm not. Mine. You can have mine. I don't want it. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything with it anyway. Bye! Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this content, Jess and I would be very grateful if you would subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you access your podcasts. Subscribing is the best way to support us and make sure we continue to reach the people who can benefit from the information we share. We also invite you to follow us on social media. We are On The Run with Jess and Tom on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And OTR Jess and Tom on X. Thank you for choosing to spend this time with us. And thank you for your support.